But most of today is really around the Pinnacle Cloud. This is um, what used to be called Azure Security Center and Azure Defender up until the Ignite announcements uh, last week. And it basically, it, it's, our, it's our main platform to um, protect your cloud and hybrid environments, right? And why is this important? <laughs> Well, it basically addresses, you know, three most urgent security challenges most uh, organizations are experiencing. And this is um, we commissioned the appointment institute to, um, you know, a cost of breach report here, right? So, you know, you basically have rapidly changing workloads and insecure configurations. Um, so rapidly changing workloads is both a strength and a challenge in the cloud. As anyone that's been using, you know, the cloud for a while, I know it's it just, you know, there's a lot, lot going on in there. A lot of organizations, especially if they did very rapid cloud migrations, um, haven't put strong governance in place, perhaps. So there's a lot of changes happening out there. And it's very difficult to keep track sometimes of how quickly things are changing in the cloud. So attacks are becoming increasingly sophisticated. Um, you know, so there's always a new breach uh, in the news lately, and, um, you know, there's more and more attackers, nation states or hack attackers are lazy. You know, kids who are bored, but there's all. But regardless, it, it it's become increasingly, increasingly sophisticated. It's no longer just the, the sort of script can be attached, right? And and people need to see visibility in their security and compliance, which is really where um you know Defender for Cloud comes into place. But um so th that's the main point here is um so for Defender for Cloud, you have to give this visibility into the security across your Azure hybrid multi cloud estate, and also let you see how those individual you know, services are, are doing if you have compliance uh, requirements as well. So uh, basically, Defender for Cloud lets you secure um, your critical workloads in Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, and on-premise as well, actually. Um, it's very easy to onboard your accounts, and you can see them native in the portal, uh, which, which if we have a few minutes, what we'll show here towards the end. Uh, you basically get um, a complete view in one place of uh, your security posture and your vulnerability across all of your resources, along with a secure score, which I'll discuss. And um, Mark is also going to go into a little bit of detail um, later on for his presentation. And you can assess uh, and implement best practices for compliance and security in the cloud. So we'll, we'll show that here in a few minutes. And as you already said, Amazon EKS clusters, EC2 workloads, containers, SQL servers, etc. And and if you're running a Windows and Linux service, uh, you can also leverage some advanced malware protections and um, endpoint detection response capabilities as well using this product. It has basically two elements. The, the first one is all around cloud security posture management, um, which is uh, that kind of, it's the security hygiene aspect, right? So you want to make sure you've got the basics right, that you've got the controls implemented, you know, you, you're following MFA has been has been turned on, you've not exposed your systems to the internet, or which you want them to be. And if you have, you know, you've got a web application firewall on them, for example, right? Uh, so it's got the secure score, which is that, which we'll, we'll show you in a moment. You've got policies and compliance and the ability to automate your response, right? And there's another aspect which we'll cover briefly towards the end, which is um, cloud workload protection, which is sort of the threat protection capabilities um, against servers and other native workloads. So the, the main the main element you're going to see for um, the Pinnacle Cloud is uh, if you're using it, you have the overview screen, which is uh, the main dashboard, right? And it gives you all the information um, right in front, so you can access it all very quickly. You can see how you're doing, how you're doing in terms of regulatory compliance, secure score, the main insights, you know, um, workload protection if you're using those features. And it's got other bits too, like if you are using it to manage, you know, um, cloud native firewalls, you can see all that at a glance. Basically, it puts everything in one spot, and this will change over time. So this is live every time you go in there. This will probably look a little bit different, right? There's a nice unified view, I guess, you know, across all of your resources, no matter where they may be, as long as you've added them into Defender for Cloud, you'll see some of the, the details here, right? And um, it's basically simple. It's just it's meant to help you give you like at a glance where and have access to everything. Uh, and the first one really is all around secure score. So secure score is um th this is the main sort of tool. It kind of gamifies it a little bit and lets you see. So if if there's you know, there might be like a hundred different security findings you could potentially have in your environment. Like I've already mentioned MFA, you've got management ports that go to the internet. Maybe maybe individuals have too much access. Perhaps you don't have encryption on your on your servers or your storage account. Maybe SQL server hasn't, you've not classified the data in there. Um, you know, and so on and so forth. And it's going to basically have a nice prioritized view for you. So it's going to show you that, for example, the number one 
biggest impact you could do is enabling multi-factor authentication, right? For, for this, for your um, for people accessing these services. So that one is going to be prioritized. So if you turn on MFA, you're going to have the biggest improvement in your secure score. So everything is prioritized by what we think is going to be the biggest bang for your proverbial buck if you enable that um, security control. So it'll help you address your vulnerabilities and prioritize, like I said, uh, and each one will improve your overall security posture. Um, it also help you speed up your regulatory compliance, and you know it's not not an NLBL in terms of regulatory compliance. Although we have a separate feature there to help you do that, and in your very granular control, you, you can say you don't want some some elements to be considered, right? And but so you have some control over which ones you really think should be impacting your secure score. So it, you know it's just very important because not always people know, especially if they're new to the cloud, exactly what what they should maybe be prioritizing, right? And the, this is intended to help you identify. What you should address first, you know, you know, mitigate those big risks, and then get on, you know, get on and, and do what you can, and sort of maintain those over time. So, um, and you'll see, like for example, really quick. So, secure score. This is if if you're looking in your secure score, it'll have like one of the recommendations might be enable MFA or secure management ports, like I discussed, right? You can go in there, you can click it, and you'll see like uh, under secure management. Um, and then that facing VM should be protected using network security groups. And you'll be able to click down and say, okay, well, I'm doing actually pretty good. Only one of the 34 VMs in this environment um, are kind of open to the internet, right? And you can you can keep drawing down further to, to find out what's going on. And some of those, you'll see there's an action column there with a little lightning bolt. So some have these kind of quick fix recommendations. You can just click it and um, a logic app will be triggered, which can go in there and just fix the resource. And you can actually create a bunch yourself. You can have a whole bunch of logic apps created that kind of help you, um, you know, just remediate sort of common actions that you might find. If you're noticing a lot of these are coming up frequently for whatever reason, you know, you, you can create a lot of ways to sort of remediate this so you don't need to spend a lot of manual effort to fix all of these reports, right? Um, then aside from sort of the secure core, secure score, you've got the compliance assessment and management. This will help you both adhere to, if, if you have compliance requirements like PCI, or you just want to see internally, you've got your own internal um, policies that maybe you want to define using Azure policy. This gives you um, an easy way to kind of demonstrate compliance across all of your resources. Again, you can you can click through tabs to like our native Azure security benchmark, um, ISO, PCI, you know, you can see, see quite a few there and you can create a custom one as well. Um, you can do Azure, AWS, on-prem, anything that's been onboarded in there, GCP. Um, the big one is our Azure Security Benchmark is what we've learned. It, it kind of ties in quite a few of those together to, to cover the sort of the elements we think from various, you know, from best practice, what are the ones that you really need to have basically you should be doing within Azure to make sure your environment has been secured properly, right? And all of these are mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, so your security operations people will probably like this. So if you see a control in there, like it's, there might be one, like we already talked about, you know, um, uh, maybe encrypting your data at rest in your storage account. It might be something that comes up in here and says, and what, under one of these regulatory compliance, probably Azure Security Benchmark or SIS uh, Top 20 around that. If you click into there, you'll see that that, it'll fit in the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So you'll see it's, um, like if it's, Defense evasion, privilege escalation. If if that control, if it were to fail to be, you know, sort of breached, it would result in you know potentially have lateral movement within the environment, etc. So that's very very handy for your um, security operations team. And we we pretty much use this everywhere. So when you notice the Sentinel on Thursday, um, and even in the M365 space. So every sort of when you see these various controls, incidents, uh, and control failures, uh, everything is mapped to a um, minor attack framework to make uh, your security guys and gals uh, jobs much easier. And um, this supports, like I said, all the common industry and regulatory standards. And you can see just in one spot, right, just how you're doing um, across each one of them very easily. And you can kind of click through to find out more. And, and the one a lot of people are going to spend their time in is you have uh, an inventory. So every asset that you have added into Defender for Cloud is going to show up here within this uh, inventory view. And it's got the very strong filtering options. So 
as you can see, if you have multiple subscriptions, you can limit down to specific subscription resource group, resource types. Um, if you only want to look at your GCP, AWS, um, or Azure Arc uh, specifically, you know, you, you can just do as much filtering as you want to really to kind of make it really easy to, to see uh, all the resources in there in, in this inventory view, and you can kind of click down to find out more. And uh, you can obviously do a nice big dump into a CSV, look at that with the Microsoft Excel or whatever sort of spreadsheet program you want to, to, to look through that on your own time. Um, and it just, it just this again, it, it, day to day, this is where most people probably be spending a lot of their time in there. You can build reports off of this, assign tags. It, it's it's just really going to spend the bulk of your time, really. I think a lot of people, when, when you're actually doing the day-to-day -day work. And um, this is something that was announced at Ignite. So one, one issue a lot of people have with the cloud, especially if um, they're sort of early adopters or, or if they're not, if they just really need to get things out there very quickly. She might not know the, the types of data you have in there, which makes it difficult to prioritize the controls or, or where you need to focus your controls, right? So uh, Azure Purview um, is now um, leveraged within Defender for Cloud, so you can kind of get this visibility. So, you know, it basically gets um, all the information around, um, you know, you can see that a little bit in this, this screenshot I try to put in there. So what kind of data in there, it's like a secret label, or whether it's highly confidential, et cetera. And then you, you could use that to sort of, when you're kind of going down in there, you might, you know, if you, if you, if you have limited, um, if, if you really have to make some tough decisions, like which ones, you know, you want to secure a specific way that's to help you do it, or if you just weren't aware, right, it just helps you with that visibility that, you know what, I really didn't think we should have, have highly confidential data in the storage account uh, or the SQL database. So it, it will really help you um, gain that visibility that, that is often lacking within um, most people's cloud environments, I think. And you can easily defil deploy the Defender for Cloud anywhere. So if you leverage Azure Arc, you can um, basically use it to deploy Defender for Cloud um, in AWS uh, on-premise and Google Cloud resources. Uh, so it, it's very easy. It just makes it too much easier to onboard. And then they're, they're basically going to show up within Defender for Cloud. You'll just see there's going to be a different icon that will show you. But it's going to give, it's a good way, especially if, if you're not as familiar with um, it, with maybe Defender for Cloud or Azure, or if you are a partner and you have customers in there, that you want to maybe convince them of how nice it is to use Defender for Cloud. It's, it's a great way to sort of, you know, use an example they could have like an on-premise or like one of their AWS virtual machines. You could use you could use Azure Arc, get it, you know, use that to deploy it and then bring it on board to kind of show them how easy it is to use um, Defender for Cloud and you know gain that visibility into the, the, you know the posture of your security resources right so that will let you as it just basically treats everything like any other resource within there so th these capabilities you know i've got here on the bullet points right like enforce compliance um asset inventory you know remediate meet the compliance it's going to make everything treated the same so no matter where it is you're going to have this basically the same sort of functionality um, that you would have for a native Azure resource because we realize not everyone is using 100% Azure, of course. And um, so that was more on the security posture management side. So if you look at sort of threat protection as a whole, so, and there's a bigger again, again on Thursday around that Microsoft Sentinel, which is uh, our cloud native SIM offering. So Defender for Cloud has its own um, threat protection, which is, you know, um, broadly, it covers much more than this, which I'll show in a minute. Um, and Microsoft Sentinel gives you that that view across your all of your resources, anything you've onboarded in that, right? So it gives you threat protection against um, across third party solutions, on-premise, Azure, GCP, AWS, basically anything you connect up to it gives you that visibility, right? And uh, uh, and of course, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. So, um, you, you know, the, these give you this sort of also the um, detection and response capability. So as we kind of lead to in the posture management as well, just like for these threat protections. So you can have all of these set up that they would leverage um, Azure Logic Apps. So if if there's um, an event, you know, it detects some sort of malicious activity, you can have it, you know, trigger a Logic App and then, you know, take that action, either a mediation action or it could raise a ticket um, for your team using, you know, the service now or wherever, however you want to do it, basically. So that you, you get that visibility and that ease of response to potential events, right? This all comes within our overarching sort of XDR um, play, which includes Microsoft 365 Defender, which um, Mark will cover here in a little bit. 
Um, so yeah, so so the, the threat protection bit again, which is this is the area that used to be called Azure Defender. Now it's all within Defender for Cloud um, is one piece, right? It just it, if you want to enable the specific threat detection capabilities, then you know that that's just a setting now within Defender for Cloud. It's not specifically called out anymore as um, Azure Defender, right? So. Um, it comes into broad categories, servers, cloud native workload, databases, storage, um, serviceware, so like um, resource manager, et cetera. So basically anything going on with Azure, you can use this to kind of get that uh, that visibility into you know, potential threat in the environment that people are, are doing things they shouldn't be doing within the environment. And even IoT devices, although this is a bit more for Defender for IoT, which does integrate with Defender for Cloud. And as I already discussed, this is also not just um, Azure. So um, it, it is a bit more. We're always adding more features. The, the, these these capabilities are more mostly Azure, and then a little bit more. So like server, SQL, and containers, for example, are, are quite well supported in Azure, but not necessarily as much for Google um, Cloud at the moment. To give you an idea, um, this this threat protection covers just so many. Um, you know, if you want to know more about how to, how to configure these or you know what what's the full breadth of capabilities for all this i'd recommend you reach out to you know quad direct and they can obviously help you leverage the full the full suite here so i don't need to read through these because that would just be boring for you but you know you got um you know any service so linux and windows servers and um this also gives you like defender for endpoint so for example if you have a linux server windows server um somewhere you can by turning on this feature, it also gives you Microsoft Defender for Endpoint on those servers. So you can, you can leverage the additional capabilities you would have from that. And you've got um, SQL Server Threat Protection or Azure SQL. So if, if you know, no matter where you're running it, you can get that. So but anyway, it has a, this large number of um, um, different capabilities you can turn on. So there's too many to go through in this, uh, this short session that we have here today. But just as you would expect for the main posture management dashboard, this this is its own dashboard. So within there, you see cloud security and I have a workload protection, which is what again, what used to be Azure Defender. So you see all this in one spot again. So you got 70 of 70 servers are protected, you know, Kubernetes are protected, uh, the container registries, app services, et cetera. And you can kind of see security alerts over time, right? That, you know, the, in this case, it actually been improving a bit, which is quite good. And, and then again, visibility again, like, oh my God, I've got like 41 VMs I've not not protected at all. You know, you, you get to sort of, again, it's going to be very similar to posture management. It's just going to be more focused on these um, what we call protection. So, you know, protecting Windows, Linux servers, um, vulnerability management, leveraging even Qualys or Defender for Endpoint. So you can kind of get that, that visibility into um, specific operating system level configuration settings on the machine, whether it's been, you know, they've been turned on or not. And again, not just Azure, it is it is broader um, hybrid cloud. So some of you, you can do this for on-premise systems. Anything has been put into Azure for the most part, right? And basically what we'd say, if you wanted to uh, strengthen your cloud security today, um, enable Defender for Cloud. Um, this part is free. It will let you see your secure score, um, generally how you've um, secured the environment, et cetera. Uh, there's just no reason not to turn it on. Um, and you know, it, it'll have your prioritized recommendations. So go through those, just try to address your top five. For a lot of people, it's gonna be MFA, it's gonna be one of the ones that we, we really hope you've already got turned on, but uh, fix those top five. And the the workload protection one, um, if you've not enabled it before, it does have a free trial. So you, you're free, you can turn that on for you know the first 30 days or so and see you know the value you might get from enabling those extra workload protection features. And Try onboarding your on-premise workloads. If you've got Linux and Windows servers on-prem, you know, use Azure Arc, get those ser servers onboarded into it and um, start protecting them as well. Um, and tomorrow more, uh, again, this is a very quick overview today. You can go to ACA MS, Defender for Cloud, and you know, there's gonna be quite a few resources on this. We have also what's called Ninja, the Ninja training on the web that you can find, which will go through it probably take you over a week to go through it all, but you can you can find out quite a bit more. And obviously reach out to our partner here today. Um, to find out more and as why you should do it right so we have um, there's a full study which you can read which which sort of analyze uh, total economic impact right so um, by turning it on right so organizations that were included in the study a 25 percent reduction in risk of security breach 50 percent reduction in time and threat mitigation 30 percent reduction you know in security policy compliance management time 
And the annual reduction can security tool spend because it gives you that visibility and ease of response. All of this in you know very easy to use uh, dashboard, right? So it, it tends to even though some of this um, might have some upfront cost to train your staff, you know, get get using the platform, and then some of the workload protection will have an ongoing cost. It, it, this study kind of shows that you know if you're looking on just around six months or so, most organizations will see a payback in doing this. And um, the last bit here, so there are a lot of announcements at Ignite, so which I've kind of been here briefly already. So Security Center and Azure Defender are now all under one product, which is Defender for Cloud. We've got uh, more extensive uh, native multi-cloud support now for AWS, as you'll see Purview, which I mentioned. Um, if you are using Sentinel, there's bi-directional um, sync now, so incidents will show up, you know, vice versa, and if you're closing one out in Sentinel, or um, defender, it will be synced back and forth. Um, you don't need to use Qualys anymore for um, threat and vulnerability management integration. You can use uh, our Microsoft native one uh, as well if you want, which is this is still in preview, I believe. Um, as I mentioned, my attack framework, um, all recommendations that sort of fit in with uh, Azure Security Benchmark anyway are mapped to my attack framework. Um, we've updated Security Benchmark V3. Uh, which has quite kind of it takes into account to the changing threat landscape and um, you know other standards as well. It, it aligns to quite a few different standards. So this has been updated to version three, and it supports Defender for Endpoint on Linux now. This is sort of general availability. It was in uh, preview for quite some time. And for additional information, we've got a couple of links there. 